Hello and a warm welcome to the Sweet Spot, your go-to golf tipping show brought to you by the Racing Post. Cannot wait for today's show. Uh, if you watched along last week, you will know why we're excited. Steve had two selections, one in the DP World Tour Championship, 25 to 1, Nikolai Hoygaard, and another in the RSM Classic, Ludwig Eberg, 14 to 1, both winning the double return, 389 to 1. And by the looks of things, plenty of you were on. We're going to be looking back on those tournaments. We've got two to preview this week in the shape of the Australian PGA and also the Joe Berg Open. Steve Palmer, take a bow. Well done. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Jay. It was a wonderful week, wasn't it? Thoroughly enjoyable. You know, it's, it's Sundays like that which is the reason why we, we put ourselves through all this, isn't it? Because, um, you know, 50 weeks of the year we do this. Golf punters bet for 50 weeks of the year. Most of those weeks really test your, your mental fortitude. Golf winners are obviously not easy to come by, but then occasionally everything goes perfectly and uh, and, and your quid's in. You know, getting both number one picks over the line in front is the, is the best possible result because um, I do a double every week on, on, on the two number one picks. Um, last week, I've been asked, obviously, a lot about the face spitter. It wasn't a face spitter because uh, the previous three weeks didn't go very well. I didn't have enough resource. I couldn't justify anything too lavish, but I definitely had um, you know, some passionate investments, uh, shall we say. And uh, yeah, they, they were life changing as it's, it's, it's life changing in, in, in terms of Christmas. You know, I'm going into Christmas um, full of beans now, full of finance. And um, yeah, and, and, and as you say, so nice to see all those Twitter responses. You're you're the king of social media. You fire all this stuff my way and uh, it looks like loads of people chopped it right off. Really, really pleased for, for everyone. And then I got some texts from bookmakers. It's always nice getting texts from bookmakers and uh, that, that they've been telling me it was the worst week of the year, you know, the worst golf betting week of the year. Um, I enjoy seeing you know, unhappy bookmakers. What was lovely, Steve, and we'll, we'll, we will talk about the golf in a moment, was obviously financially so many people have, 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 have had it off. And, and we'll go into uh, what's usually quite an expensive month with with some some backing, which is great. But also just lovely story. I mean, in terms of Sunday evenings, like it doesn't get too much better than that. You've already got Nikolai, who's won brilliantly in 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 um, Dubai. And obviously everything's rolling over to the double. You, these doubles usually always end in pain, don't they? You, you think you, you you think it's going well and something happens, but it was monumental from Ludwig Eberg. And I felt like I was watching history. I felt like I was watching the start of something really special. And that was what it was for me. I, you know, I think we'll look back on that in 15 years time when Ludwig's won countless majors and go, you know, we were there, we were on. And, and that felt really good. Yeah, yeah, we said we were going to look back and laugh, weren't you? We, we can practice that now. You know, when we look back and laugh at when we were on at 14 to 1 for the RSM Classic. Go and have a little laugh now while I have a sip of water. <laughs> oh. That's best thing. Well, I'm still cackle. so happy, Steve. I'm still yeah. so happy. You can cackle like a witch. I mean, on the, on the bare form, 61-61 weekend. I mean, I've never seen anything as good as that. 29 under par. Yeah, this is the special one. This is the new Tiger Woods. I mean... I'm just going to roll with the hype. I think the hype machine is, is is not going far enough, if anything. I mean, the hype machine has been has been clicking, isn't it? But uh, for me, you know, all this talk, I was thinking about all this talk of uh, artificial intelligence lately. It's been it's been in the news, isn't it? And, you know, if Elon Musk and his pal sat down to design a robot golfer, you know, the perfect golfing machine, they would come up with Ludwig Aubert, wouldn't they? You know, he is he, he is like a robot, technical perfection, physically and mentally. You know, six foot three, perfect swing, perfect temperament, relentlessly focused, completely unflappable, power, accuracy, modesty. I mean, this is what I want to talk about now. The interviews with him are absolutely hilarious because he's so ludicrously modest. They they asked him in his media conference after the whim about when he felt he could make it as a pro. And he said, I was quite good at college. <laughs> I was good. <laughs> I was quite good at college with a straight face. He said I was quite good at college. I mean, yeah, he's probably the best college golfer in history. And then by the green, straight after the win, by the green, they said to him, why do you think you've been able to make such an immediate impact as a pro? And he just said, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, just the, the king of modesty. He could have quite easily said, they are because I'm so bloody good. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I've just been struck about. I can't believe how modest he is. It's, it's, it's lovely to see. He's, he's a very measured character. And, you know, I was just glad we got on a, a, a decent price. Because I, I remember back in Tiger Woods at Juicy Prices in 1996. I remember back in John Rahm at Juicy Prices 20 years after that. 
And yeah, we, we, we've got on Aubert at some some juicy prices early doors. Um, we didn't get him over the line at those prices. But yeah, I, I think we've got a good hit in there at 14 to 1. And he's only going to get shorter from here now, isn't he? You only get small window of opportunity, small window of opportunity with you know, generational talents to, to get on at big prices. Um, I think that's we, it done now. Yeah. And we found that we, we, we will talk about Ludwig again shortly, but I want to go in kind of chronological order here in sure. terms of the weekend. Let's start with Nikolai in the DP World Tour Championship. Now, I was uber confident. I, I, I don't think I'd heard since I've been doing sweets, but anyway, heard you as confident and as committed to two players. And there was something about you last week. And anyway, I was fully invested in Nikolai. I thought he'd blown it on the Saturday when he had a short birdie putt on 16 and missed it. He missed a, a fairly short one on 17 for bogey and then bogeyed 18. His swing was all over the place. He's hitting these kind of duck hooks. I thought the dream might be over. And then there was that five hole period. I think, was it from 14 onwards through to 18 where he put together a sensational run and, and much like Ludwig, I mean, Nikolai is someone we should be getting really excited about. Absolutely. Yeah. He's 22 years of age, Nikolai Hogar. Yeah, what a player, what a dude. Yeah, that you're right. It was so exciting pairing those two young studs together, wasn't it? The Scandinavian studs. Um, and and yeah, I just think both of them have got such glorious futures. And um, yeah, you're right. The 12th hole on Sunday, it didn't look good, did it? Yeah, you know, he missed a short par par part the 12th on Sunday, and uh, I was yeah really gutted about that. And um, and I was thinking he's got a mountain to climb there. But then he made five birdies in a row from the from the 13th onwards. Um, and then, yeah, he could afford to miss that little tiddle on 18. I know you were you were um, struggling with that, uh, the, the miss putt on 18, weren't you? And, uh, well, uh, it yeah. was amusing, Steve, because it's always fascinating to see how people follow their golf. Because obviously, unless you're you're very committed and, you know, you don't have too much else going on, you can afford to sit at home all down the Sunday. But I was out for Sunday lunch <laughs> and, I'd, and I was chatting to, to Bruce Millington and I was saying, Bruce, you need to keep me up to date here because I'm starting to get quite, quite nervy. And I was just about to tuck into my cauliflower cheese. And he and he sent me a video of Nikolai missing on 18. And I, it was the worst tasting mouthful of cauliflower cheese of my life. <laughs> and then he said, oh, Tommy's missed the putt on 17. And yeah. everything just, you know, the, the, the mint sauce was beautiful and everything just tasted <laughs> so much better. It was, a, it was a really great Sunday. But so glad to see him get it over the line because it... it you did feel he was the best player of the week and he and he did deserve it, didn't he? Yeah, absolutely. I, I used to be one of those people that could just sit on their own watching every golf shot. Obviously got a family now. And when when that was happening, I had uh, Tommy Tiger was just literally punching me in the belly because um, I was standing up watching the telly like that. And I just put my big belly out like a big sumo wrestler and just let him just use that as a punch bag because I couldn't communicate with him. I was too focused. So I thought I'd entertain him with with that. Um, so yeah, when Nikolai missed that that part on 18, um, he was whacking me in the belly, um, and uh, quite literally but, a gut pump. It was quite literally a gut buster, but yeah, fortunately Tommy Fleetwood um, got the jitters on 17, didn't he? Because um, yeah, everyone was cheering on Fleetwood. He lives in Dubai now, doesn't he? So he was the yeah, he had loads of supporters there cheering his every move. Um, but that three part 17 was a pretty meek surrender. I mean, he, and he missed a great chance on 13 as well. He had a great Great tee shot on 13, missed the putt, um, and just just hasn't won much in the last few years, has he? Fleetwood, yeah, 2019 Ned Bank, 2022 Ned Bank, and then another opportunity went begging. But yeah, if, if you're watching, Tommy, thank thank you very much because um, you know the world and his wife was on the on the on the Hoga Abba double. So, so, so Nick, Nikolai wins in Dubai, a nice price, even if you've just got the singles and you're not waiting on the double. What 17 your... greens of regulation. Sorry, Joe, I must mention that 17 greens of regulation on Sunday. You, you, you're talking about a worthy winner. Nikolai Hogar hits 17 greens of regulation, Mr. Cutler short putts and still, you know, comfortable winner, a cosy winner in the end. Well, that was the frustration, wasn't it? Because it wasn't like he was scrambling about. It was the frustration was he could have been oh. further ahead if his putter was a, a little bit hotter playing wonderful golf started off mm. putting great at the start of the tournament putting great remember in the Ned bank he was amazing with his putter and um, we were very excited but yeah he putted well for for large portions of that tournament just missed some some short ones here and there but yeah he played the best golf you, you can't you can't tell me he wasn't a worthy champion so maybe just a quick word on on rory McIlroy. i know he'd already wrapped up the race to dubai going into the week that's his fifth race to Dubai title now. How do you assess his chances going into this new season, in, uh, uh, you know, mainly around majors that we all want him to, to win more of? Yeah, who knows? I mean, he's, he's quit the, um, he's, he's got no commitments on the PGA Tour um, board anymore, has he? He's, he's had enough of that. 
um he's been doing a bit of uh these sort of indoor golf projects i don't know whether that's is that is that they pulled the plug on that indoor golf project oh, yeah I don't um know. something go wrong with that but yeah yeah I, I yeah who knows who knows but uh, he was in holiday mode last week and um yeah this time of the year you got to be careful you got to look at players who yeah, motivation is, is pretty important at this time. Yeah, there's a few players that have already gone into holiday mode. Absolutely. So so Nikolai wins that tournament and, and we're going into the RSM Classic. A Berg's got a one shot lead. Um, let me just read to you the, the records that he tied or or broke um this week, Steve. He tied the lowest 72 hole score ever on the PJ Tour, 253. The lowest 54 um hole score ever from rounds two to four, 186. Ties the lowest 36 hole score in terms of the final two rounds with 261s, the lowest score over the final two rounds ever. I mean, that was the Saturday and Sunday was some of the best golf we've we've seen all season from any player. Yeah, I know a lot of people like playing the uh, the computer games these days, don't they? You know, and 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 that that was like computer game golf, wasn't it? I mean, if you're on your um, what do they use? Go on, can, can help me out here. Uh, an got Xbox me. or an Xbox. Yeah. If you're on your Xbox and you shoot 61, 61, you might go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is real life we're dealing with here, guys. And he's just shot 61, 61. And um, yeah, I just thought it was hilarious, really. I mean, the part on 17 was just comical, wasn't it? Just and whacked it in. <laughs> you could say it's it too hard, but it's gone in. You know, it's gone in. And um uh yeah, I just thought it was glorious. And I think, yeah, we're witnessing something special here. And um, you know, Jose Mourinho calls himself the special one. I don't I don't think he is. I think uh Ludwig Aubert is. And um yeah, we're just gonna have to accept now that we're gonna play at shorter prices. Um yeah, in, in the majors we're gonna get big, big prices, of course. Um yeah, he's going to get in all the majors now because he's in the top 50 of the world rankings going into next year. Um, yeah, can he win the Masters on debut? Um, you yeah, know, big But ask, this is the amazing ask. thing, Steve. Ludwig Ebo has won on both tours. He's been in the winning team for the Ryder Cup and he's yet to play in a major. I mean, you said, when I saw when I read that, I thought that can't be true. And then I was like, yeah, it is. It's mad. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's made this this much rapid, rapid progress. Nobody's won on both tours this early and then throw the Ryder Cup winning. He, he, he's doing things that haven't been done before by anyone. And uh, uh, um, the amazing I mean, the, the amazing thing, you, 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 if you if you weren't watching, you see a four shot lead, you think that oh, was easy. Um, you know, never in danger, but he was being pressed all the way. And, you yeah. know, his partner would hold, a, hold a, a decent putt, whether it be for par or for birdie. Ludwig backs it up with a, you know, a 10-footer. And yeah, yeah, he was, particularly in that kind of opening 13 holes. There weren't too many long putts holes, but those 10-footers, you stood over them and you just didn't expect him to miss. It was just yeah. all-round um, brilliant. He, 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 he kind of balanced the, the risk really well, I thought, between aggression. He drove that par four and then he was, yeah. you know, missed, you know, playing a couple of pins a little bit safe. I thought it was one of the most mature performances and, and, and impressive performances I've seen for, for such a long time. You're absolutely right. I mean, he was so gutsy when he drove that par four. I mean, if he, if he misses that right, then he's in all sorts of trouble. So, um, yeah, he attacked early on got control of the golf tournament and then Mackenzie Hughes was giving him a good old game. Yeah. But it was just, I talk about this temperament. It's, it's, it's not just, you know, technically he's perfect, but his temperament's amazing because he responded to everything Hughes did, didn't he? You know, he would just, you know, Hughes would make a birdie and, and a bear would follow him in. I was so impressed with um, how he handled everything. I just think, you know, he must have fantastic parents. They brought up a fine young man. Uh, he's so steely and, and, and so modest. You know, he may, may I just, it, it, it's incredible how modest it is. I can't stress that enough. You know, it, it, there's, there's not, there's nothing about him that's cocky. You know, um, mm. and he's probably going to be the greatest player since Tiger Woods. Um, you know, maybe he'll get a bit cockier as he gets older. I want it, him to be a bit cockier. <laughs> it, it was, it was momentous, Steve. And and as I said at the start of the show, you know, plenty of our readers and and listeners and viewers w were on. I mean, you were. I think you, you you have a confidence like no other, but you you know kind of said it was over after about nine holes on, on the Sunday. I had Bruce on the other hand messaging me. I think until the final putt on eighteen, going it could be you know could still be alive this one. Um, but you obviously you saw something in Ludwig that you thought yeah he's not he's not losing from here. And even when he was one or two ahead. Yeah, I found it really relaxing. I must say, I mean, it, there was there was a, you know, a lot of finance involved here, and it was very very exciting to to win that. But there was times where I was just strolling off to the fridge and um, you know missed a couple of shots. I, I didn't really see any other result, but um, maybe that's me being naive and foolish. You know, Bruce is always telling me anything can happen, 
Um, but yeah, is I this just your, is this your, is this your new kind of healthy body, healthy mind mantra that you're taking on? Is it brought some serenity to your life? I do wonder whether this running business is helping my brain, you know, because uh, they, they, they always bang on about healthy body, healthy mind, don't they? So, um, yeah, that the first week that I took up running, um, I've had both winners. So, uh, yeah, 100 percent record as a as a runner. Uh, so <laughs> let's, let's see how if I can maintain that. Well, well done, Steve. I'm fully expecting you to be out on, on marathons every day to keep up this uh, this superb run. Should we take a look at this week's tournaments? Because I know a lot of people will be will be tuning in, waiting for for this week's um, tips. As we always say, I think you know, still gamble responsibly here. Just if you've got an, an enlarged pot of finance, it doesn't mean you have to spend it all. So so do pick wisely. But Steve will put in maximum effort once again. So we've got the Australian PGA and the Joburg Open. Steve, where would you like to start? I'll go to the Aussie PGA, which is the better tournament, and starts first. OK, we'll do that then. Uh, we're playing at Royal Queensland Golf Club. Talk us through the setup. Yes, in Brisbane, Australia, 7,084 yards, par 71, three par fives. Disregard any course form prior to 2007 because the course reopened then, a redesign which um, created a, a new layout, essentially. You've got four pieces of course form to look at. The Australian Amateur of 2009 and 2020, and two Australian PGAs, which were staged there last year. We have one in January last year and one in November. Wide fairways, no rough, good weather. Uh, you, yeah, in good weather, this track is there for the taking, and the weather looks good this week. Light breezes, fine weather, temperatures around 25C. So, yeah, strong approach play and a hot putter is the key to success. We've got 156 runners going to post, and get your bets on early, guys. Uh, 8 p.m. on Wednesday night for UK punters. Um, and then the live coverage starts at 2.30 a.m. on Thursday morning. OK, so an early one. If you're wanting to watch this, uh, you, you may be excited after you hear Steve's selections. Let's uh, run you through the market leaders. You've got a short price favourite this week in the shape of Cam Smith, 4-1. to one. Min Woo Lee, 13-2. to two. Cam Davis, 10s. Adam Scott, the same price. Adrian Moronk flying over. He's 12-1. to one. Joachim Neiman, 14s. Bigger the rest. Steve, we had two winners last week. Who's the main selection for the Aussie PGA? Cameron Smith is going to win the Aussie PGA. Four to one is perfectly fair. Still comfortably the highest ranked player in this field, despite the fact he hardly ever picks up world ranking points these days. You know, the live players only get world ranking points when they play in events that are not on the live circuit. So they yeah, it's hardly ever they, 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 they get any points. Yeah, Smith banked some precious points when finishing runner up in the Hong Kong Open the week before last. That was a useful warm-up spin for the Australian PGA. This event is one of his favourites. He's always highly motivated for this one. You know, that desire for world ranking points just adds another layer of motivation to Smith this time. I think he's going to successfully defend his title. He won the last Aussie PGA by three shots. That was his third Australian PGA title. He won it in 2017 and 2018 at Royal Pines, which is another Queensland track. This is a Brisbane boy, born in Brisbane, always gets a hero's welcome on his return here. I can't come up with any good reasons why he won't win a fourth PGA on Sunday. Yeah, the, the fairways are nice and generous. Smith can throw in the odd loose tee shot. It, it won't matter here. Royal Queensland looks set to deliver a, a really low scoring tournament in perfect weather. Let's back the best putter in the field. Let's back the best player in the field. Let's back the richest player in the field. I mean, he's... um. He's won twice on the Live Circuit this year, Live London and Live Bedminster. Won Live Bedminster by seven shots in August. You know, let's be perfectly frank here. Smith is still a top five player in the world, isn't he? You know, talent wise, the, the, the world rankings don't say it, but we all know how good he is. And I think the price is fair because the weather forecast. You know, there looks like no chance of a draw bias this week. So if Smith loses, uh, it won't be down to, to weather. And, and, and in a fair fight, he should be winning this golf tournament. For me, it was between Smith at four to one and Minwoo Lee at 13 to two for my main money. Um, you know, my affections for Minwoo Lee. He was playing in Dubai last week. That's a 15 hour journey from Dubai to Brisbane. Um, Smith could get settled in Brisbane earlier. Um, Smith is better than Lee on approach shots. Smith is the better putter. Smith is the major champion. Smith is the Queensland. Minwoo Lee is from the other side of Australia. I just think they're the two most likely winners, but Smith has got a significant edge, more so than the prices reflect, I feel. OK, I was going to mention, actually, that that kind of travel time. I mean, there's plenty of players in, in this field that were, were playing in Dubai. I mean, that can't... Yeah. I, I know they're flying first class and everything, but you still get jet lag, etc. I mean, it, it it can't be easy. So, so Cam Smith at, at fours, I guess the, the, the only real kind of 
comparison I feel with um, with other tournaments is when you see John Rahm in the in the Spanish Open, isn't it? Similar yeah. prices, home homeboy. Cam Smith yeah. then uh, the main selection in this. Um, how many picks for the Aussie PGA, Steve? We got five, two enormous prices. Okay, now uh, who's the second? David Michaluzzi. 28 to 1, David Michaluzzi, a 27 year old Australian with his tail up. In the last 14 months, he's won four times on the Australasian circuit. Three of those victories have come this year. The last one was last week in the Victorian PGA Championship. It was not a victory which would have taken much out of him. He was seven shots behind through two holes on Sunday. Uh, Kazumi Kabori had a wobble up front. Mitchell Uzi went birdie crazy and won by a shot. This is a rising star of Australian golf. He was 14th in the Daniel Lynx Championship last month. Then he was second in the Queensland PGA Championship before his win last week. Putting better than ever. This is going to be a low scoring week. Get on the good putters. Mitchell Uzi is equipped to, to stay the pace. He finished ninth and sixth in those two Aussie PGAs last year at this course. And he's not got the pressure of chasing a DP World Tour card this week. He won the Australian Order of Merit this year. That's given him DP World Tour status. So he tees up this week as a DP World Tour player. I think he's going to be the main threat to, to Cameron Smith. OK, uh, juicier price about David Mitchell-Uzi. Second of five. Who's up third? Tom McKibben. 45 to one Tom McKibben. Finished runner-up in the 2020 Australian Amateur at Royal Queensland. It'd be easy to think that McKibben is a is a is a cool stabies in this week, but no, excelled there three years ago and has since gone on to become a DP World Tour champion. He won the European Open in June. Recent signs have been encouraging that he's getting back to his best. 14th in the Daniel Links last month. He was one of those players that got unlucky and had to play a virtually unplayable Carnusti on the final day. Do you mm. remember that? Yeah. Um, he was ninth in the Qatar Masters. Uh, 33rd in the Ned Bank, 32nd in the DP World Tour Championship last week. But I think last week he, he, he got more out of it than, than you think because he, he was playing in practice rounds with Rory McIlroy and Shane Lowry. The Irish lads were sticking together. He's good pals with these boys. I think he, 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 they, they had a skins match, a pre-tournament skins match, and McKibben made a eagle on the 18th hole to win all the money and uh, you know, and beat McIlroy and, and Lowry and take all their money. They, yeah, things like that. You know, he, he must feel like he truly belongs in with the elite now. He's only 20 years of age. You've got Bundles of potential. I think he's going to have a bit of fun this week. Yeah, back back down under, and um, yeah, at that price, I'm chancing Tom McKibben. He is one of those, isn't he, Steve? That I, I think probably if you'd said his name this time last year, not many people would have would have heard of it. But you read off some of those form lines from this season. He's had a he's had a good year. Well, if I had said his name last year, I would have called him Tom McGibbon. I kept getting <laughs> get, getting getting his name wrong, didn't I? I don't know why my brain wasn't functioning properly. With it, but yeah, Tom McKibben. Massive future, yeah, great driver. Um, I can see him making mincemeat of, of Royal Queensland this week. Tom McKibben, uh, around about 45 to 1. Three down, two to go. Who's next? Here come the big prices, 250 to 1. Elvis Smiley. Elvis <laughs> Smiley. We've had him before. We had him, we've had, you know, he's, he's a sweet spot regular. He doesn't play that much, but he's a sweet spot regular. Australian left hander. I've long expected him to become a superstar. He turned pro at the age of 18. He's 21 now. I think he's about to take his career to the next level. He was awesome at a young age, become a regular contender on the Australasian circuit. In those two Aussie PGAs last year, he finished 12th in both of them. And his form this year is brighter than ever. He's played 10 events. He's posted three top 10s, six top 20s. He was a quarter finalist in the 2020 Australian Amateur at Royal Queensland. And he may have that secret weapon again this week. He's great mates with Mike Clayton, who designed this course. Clayton has caddied for, for Elvis Smiley in the Aussie PGA in the past. Yes, a nice little edge to have the course designer on the back. Uh, whoever is caddying for, for Smiley this week, I haven't been able to nail that one down. It might be Clayton again. I think he'd give a good account of himself. I think this is a world beater that's um, you know waiting to take off. Um, um, absolutely massive price. If, if I guess advising viewers, Steve, would you be inclined to take a, a slightly smaller price if it meant more each way terms? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll be taking eight. Um, but yeah, yeah, get plenty of each way terms there. Uh, you can afford to at those prices. Elvis Smiley. I mean, if there was a, if there was, this, if this was priced up based on best names, I think he'd be short price favourite, wouldn't he? <laughs> Elvis Smiley, yeah. absolutely brilliant. Uh, one more massive price to go. Who is it? It's Harrison Crow. Uh, 150 to one now is best. He turned professional in September. He's been ready for the paid ranks for a while. Brilliant amateur career. He's one of the most cocksure youngsters I've ever seen. I mean, I'll talk about. Um, I want Ludwig Albert to get a bit more cocky. I mean, I, I want Harrison Crow to go the other way. I mean, he's, he's got a touch of arrogance about him, this lad. Um, if you find the video of him hitting a ball from um, the street in St. Andrews onto the old course. Oh, is that um, him? That's him, yeah. Oh, you've seen that one, have you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
he's outside a pub and you know, there's a real rabble going. Rawr. I thought it was hugely disrespectful to the to the old course, to be honest. Um, but yeah, he got, yeah, he got lots of hits or whatever. But um, yeah, we, yeah, he's a, he's a cocky Aussie, but we can handle a cocky Aussie if he wins us lots of money. And he may well do this week. He won the Asia Pacific Amateur last year. That's what got him into the Masters and the Open. Um, so that he delayed turning pro so he could play Masters Open. He won the New South Wales Open last year on the Oz Tour when he's still an amateur. That's what I mean about it. he's been ready to be a pro for ages, but he's just delayed it to play some majors. Um, he's played hardly any events on the Oz Tour. He's already got three top threes, including that win. He was second in the Queensland PGA earlier this month. He was eighth in the Hong Kong Open last time out, uh, the, the, the event that Smith played in. So I'm expecting rapid progress from Harrison Crow. I think he could win this week. Um, I would advise a passionate each way bet. OK, wow, that's um, a, a decent portfolio to be going to, uh, to to war with, Steve. I mean, just looking at the top of the market, you've obviously got the favourite in the, in the in the shape of Cam Smith. You've mentioned Min Woo Lee. You've also got Cam Davis and Adam Scott up the top there. Why, why are you not uh, siding with those guys? I think a bit of low scoring week and Cam Davis, I can never trust with a putter. Um, Adam Scott, likewise. Yeah, I think make it between Smith and Min Woo for your main bet and then have those others at big prices. OK, great stuff, Steve. Um, we will recap all of our selections at the end of the show. Let's move over to the Joburg Open. And I know you, this is a, one that's probably uh, you're, you're fond of, having landed a very big price winner a couple of years ago, Steve. So looking forward to seeing who we've got in this event. Uh, talk us through where are we playing? We're at Houghton Golf Club, Johannesburg, South Africa. 7,227 yards past 70, only two par fives. Like with the Aussie PGA, you need to ignore the old course form. Jack Nicklaus and his team ripped up the track and, and opened an essentially new one in 2009. The only significant course form since the redesign is the Sunshine Tour qualifying school in 2019 and 2020 and last year's Joburg Open. This is a short track, you know, playing at altitude, sunny and warm weather expected, light breezes throughout. Uh, and as with most Nicklaus designs, accurate iron play the key to success. A field of 156 going to post. OK, always nice to hear nice weather forecasts. There's something something comforting about seeing a sunny, a sunny golf course when you're sat here in the cold and the, and the miserable rain. That's why I love the Dubai event so much. You wake up, you stick the telly on and there's blue skies, which makes you feel slightly better about life, doesn't it? Absolutely, Jack. And, and, and as a punter, it gives you incredible confidence because I can't see any chance of draw bias this week. Yeah, famous last words when suddenly a hurricane comes in on, on, on all our players are out there. But it seems to me like this is a very fair week. We're going to get a fair fight on, in both events. That's exactly what we want. Let's take a look at the top of the market for the Joburg Open. Your favourite, Dean Burmester, 11 to 1. Christian Bazudenhout, 12s. Brandon Gray, 16 to 1. Dan Bradbury, 18s. Thriston, the Piston Lawrence, 18 to 1. Adrian Itegi, 25s. Bigger the rest. The Joburg Open, I mentioned there, Thriston Lawrence, the Piston, did you proud at very big prices a couple of years ago when it was delayed? It was, it was cut short, wasn't it? Was it for storms or something? If it I remember was. rightly. It was yeah. all sorts going on. But uh, yeah, yeah, that was a wonderful, wonderful winner. And are you going to ask me who's the headline selection this week? Uh, you've led into it beautifully. Steve. <laughs> well, no, no, you have. You have. Uh, Thriston the Piston Lawrence is, is 20 to 1, which is a fantastic prize. You know, he can be proud of the way. He battled for a PGA Tour card on Sunday. Yeah, he closed the final round of the DP World Tour Championship with three consecutive birdies, finished fifth at the Earth Course, played some great golf last week. He knew he needed some serious fireworks to get the, uh, in the PGA Tour card place. You know, he, the top 10 getting into the um, getting PGA Tour cards. Rasmus Hogar was the one that was in the most unfortunate position. He finished a place below uh, the qualifying spots. Lawrence was next on the list, but you know it's a great effort. He knew it. He knew it was going to be tricky. He can focus on the DP World Tour for another season, and uh, and the Joburg Open is is the perfect tournament for him for him to start again. Yeah, he was a hero in. Um, it was two years ago now, wasn't it? Two years ago, we, we were on him at 225 to one for the Joburg Open. You know, he he was Father Christmas that year. Hogar and Aubert have played that role this year, um, but I want some. I want plenty of beans on Lawrence this week. You know that that was that win was at a different Joburg track, but Houghton sets up really nicely for him as well. In a funny week there last year, um, he, 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 he he shot 66, 73, 73, 66, finished 33rd. Um, I think we'll see more 66s from him this week than we'll see 73s. He looked in fine fettle last week. Yeah, well, he was decent in the Ned Bank two weeks ago. Massive downgrade and prolific champion now. It'd be his fifth 
DP World Tour title if he if he wins this week. No, he's been impressive. Have you, have you ever backed a player in the same tournament at such the same player at such contrasting prices? <laughs> oh, blimey, no, probably haven't. No, no, no. Good point, well made. There you go. Thrusting the piston, main selection, the Joe Berg Open. Who's up next? Nick Backham, forty to one, rising star of the circuit, loves playing in South Africa. Mate, well, loves playing in Africa generally. Actually, he made his name in the in the pro golf tour. Uh, on the pro golf tour in 2020, he was still an amateur. He won a pro pro golf tour event in Morocco. Then he won one in Egypt. Then he won another one in Poland. So when he was still an amateur, he won three events on the on the pro golf tour. He turned pro in 2021. Made some some early waves on the challenge tour last year. Um, third place in the Limpopo Championship, one of my favourite tournaments. Wow. Uh, that's in South Africa. So he he, 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 was, he was third in the Lumpupu Championship. And then he got a place in the Joburg Open at Houghton, uh, an Open with a 64. He shot 64 on this course last year in the first round, eventually finished 39th. Uh, and then that love affair with Africa has, has, has been cemented this year. He got his DP World Tour card at, at Q School, 18th in the SDC Championship in South Africa, and then a four-shot victory in the Johnson Workwear Open in South Africa in March to become a DP World Tour champion. He's fully settled on the circuit now. He was fourth in the Czech Masters, seventh in the Irish Open, 24-year-old powerhouse. We have to back Nick Backham. That is a, a mighty CV, isn't it, for, for still a, a very young man? Um, I, did I ask again? I always forget how many picks for this one. It's a 5 5 formation, very similar because they yeah, two enormous prices at the end of each staking plan. Okay, okay. So two down, three to go. Who's next? Casey Jarvis, sweet spot regular, 45 to 1. Still only 20 years old, and he's a sweet spot regular. We backed him at 300 to 1 for this last year. I was very excited. 67, 63, went clear at the, the top of the leaderboard. Sorry, there's a massive helicopter coming over my head. <laughs> can hear that, actually. That's quite impressive, yeah. That's a low flyer. Are you near an air base or something, Steve, or are you, are you under attack? Well, yeah, they, we, we, they, 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 yeah, on Portland, there's a few few choppers over there. But uh, you always get twitchy these days, don't you? You never know what's going to happen. I mean, I get so wrapped up. I've been wrapped up in the golf tournaments for 48 hours. We could be at war with Nazi Germany, for all I know. Um Anyway, uh, Casey pretty, Jarvis, that's Casey Jarvis, up. 67, 63. Uh, what a star. I thought you were know, going to have a 300 to 1 winner last year, but he carded a pair of 71s over the weekend and finished ninth. Still a great effort for a 19 year old. Since then, he's won on the Challenge Tour, the Euron Bank Open in, in July, and it was a win that had been massively coming. He had, he had five second places on various tours this year before winning. Uh, in Austria there. He carded around a 59 on the Sunshine Tour in April, Jack, in the Stellar Artois Players' Championship. You know, the Stellar Artois were, were on Casey that week. He's been quiet since his victory, maybe massively hung over from the Stellar Artois, uh, but seventh place seventh place last time out in the Challenge Tour Grand Final is a timely return to form. We have to be on Casey Jarvis. He's a beast of a golfer. There's so much good talent out there. I mean, uh, Ludwig Bears is obviously our favourite, but Casey Jarvis has got a massive future as well. You're right. You you look down these lists, even at massive prices. There's names where you go, God, they're you know seriously talented. It's it's so difficult to to find the winner. And I admire your efforts to, to do so each and every week. Okay, so Casey Jarvis, that's third on the list, isn't it? Um, two big prices still to go. Looking forward to hearing who they are. Rupert Kaminsky, Rupert Kaminsky at two hundred and fifty to one, who has shown a liking to Houghton Golf Club in the two Sunshine Tour qualifying schools events I mentioned. He was 14th in 2019. He was third in 2020. He probably felt some weight of expectation when teeing up in the Joburg Open last year because he knew he, he, he loved this course. He opened with a nervous 76. Carded a 68 the following day, missed the cut by two shots. But he was in poor form coming into that event. This time, he's a completely, it's a completely different Rupert coming into town. From, from May onwards, Rupert has become a bear, Jack. He's... Uh, he, 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 He's not Ludwig Ober, but he is Rupert Ober because this is a 27-year-old who suddenly started believing in himself and suddenly started playing well. He won the PGA Championship on the Sunshine Tour at the end of September, his first win. Won't be worrying about Sunshine Tour Q schools anymore. He secured his Sunshine Tour future. He's been playing great for six months. He was 11th uh, last time out in his latest Sunshine Tour event. So, yeah, we've got a new Kaminsky here. He could take his chance. Rupert the Bear, absolutely brilliant. Um, one more to go in the Joburg Open, Steve. Who is it? It's another 250 to one shot as, as things stand. It's Dion Gurmishis. 
Um, maybe should we, maybe I should give a spelling for pun. Ah, it'd be on the screen, wouldn't it? Yeah, Will can do Dion the spelling. Dion Gurmishes, yeah. Dion Gurmishes, who tied 14th with Kaminsky in that 2019 Sunshine Tour qualifying score at Houghton. Gurmishes was contending for Sunshine Tour titles that year. He's 24 years old now, but he was excellent from a very young age. He was 66th in the Joburg Open last year, but he's come on a bundle since then. Graduated from the Challenge Tour, was ninth in the ISPS Hander Championship in April. He won the US Open qualifier at Walton Heath in May. He was 15th in the Sudal Open. He was third in the KLM Open. Uh, so he's become a DP World Tour contender now. He's back on home turf, ter home turf this week. I, I think he'll rediscover top gear. Really excited, Dean Gurmishy. Don't Dion Gurmishy, sorry, don't know Dion, a whole yeah. lot about him. Excited to uh, to see him do well this week, Steve. So five in each. How are you advising punters to to attack things this week? Well, obviously we have to have a double. Um, you know, Cameron Smith and Thriston Lawrence. Look out for the enhanced win only markets that are out there. Uh, I got 118 to one on that double with the enhanced win only options. Um, so yeah, have a Smith and Lawrence double. Uh, and then, yeah, Cameron Smith, yeah, you have deep pockets to play him each way, but um, yeah, maybe a win, win tickle on him at fours and then each way on every, everyone else. Um, okay. Yeah, th 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 those four massive price runners, you don't need a lot on them to make to make them count. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm as excited as you are, Jackie. It'd be, it'd be lovely to keep up the momentum and kick to the line and ride it to the line because <laughs> um, there's not many events left. We've got two this week, three next week. Um, yeah, we, yeah, the, the, and you have a little two-week break. Okay, no, really excited. Let's run through um, them once more, Steve, so people can jot them down. We'll start in the Australian PGA Championship. Cameron Smith, David Michaluzzi, Tom McKibben, Elvis Smiley, Harrison Crow. Okay, and in the Joburg Open? Thriston Lawrence, Nick Backham, Casey Jarvis, Rupert Kaminsky, Dion Gurmishes. Superb, Steve. Um, did you have time to celebrate the, the double or have you just been straight back into into the grind of, of life? No, I mean, I was tired and emotional by the time the golf had finished on, on Sunday night. Um, yeah, it was an, yeah, it was an early night. No, I didn't have time to celebrate. And then, yeah, straight back into it. It's like being a professional golfer. You, you, you win a golf tournament, and then you go straight back into the, you know, you're jetting to the next uh, tournament. So, no, I haven't yet, but I, I will do. I, but I, I was I was listening to a, to a podcast with Matt Fitzpatrick yesterday on my little morning walk, and he said oh, yeah. that his his form actually declined because he spent too long kind of celebrating his U.S. Open win, not like going out and partying, but he said he wanted to to feel the you know he wanted to appreciate the moment because he's probably not yeah. going to get it again. And I thought maybe you might have had like a, a little evening meal out maybe on the Monday or something just well, to soak it all up. It's important, isn't it? No, I was too busy. I worked sort of 15 hours yesterday to try and um, work out what's going to happen this week. So, um, yeah, I'll have to delay delay that celebration. But, uh, yeah, I was brought crashing back down to earth yesterday by my, my MOT, actually, on the car, because uh, um, that's the best part of two bags of sand required for that. So uh, you could say it's good timing after what happened last week. I didn't really care what they came up with. But, um, yeah, the, the, the car's on the way out. I don't look after it. But I, I couldn't help wondering whether the... Um, yeah, the mechanic guys have been you know, looking at your Twitter, you know, all the Twitter stuff about, mm. you know, Steve, Steve's cleaned up, Steve's cleaned up. Yeah, I, I felt a little bit like Newcastle United when they show interest in a interest in a player. Yeah, uh, so I, they sort of knew at the mechanics that whatever they came up with, I had the at the finance. Well, the, the difficult thing with cars as well, Steve, is they could literally say anything, and you can't exactly prove them wrong, can you? Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm so uh, whenever I go, I just have to trust that they're nice people. And well, that's the problem, isn't it? He spent 15 minutes on the phone going through all the things that it failed on, and it, you know, I had no idea what he was talking about. I just said, "Come, just tell me how much it is." And, uh, yeah, yeah. So that's a bit of a blow. So a slight dent to the momentum, but we'll Ouch. get we'll get back on the front foot this week. And I'm, I'm I'm sure. No, I'm I'm looking forward to this week. It's going to be great fun. Yeah, it really is. Um, three tournaments next week. We've, we've got the Australian Open, South African Open, and the Hero World Challenge. So potentials for, for three-way trebles there as well. So um, <laughs> a few very exciting weeks ahead. As I did mention earlier, um, if you did win and, and win big last week, please do still go into this week with uh, with composure. Um, and uh, yeah, really looking forward to seeing all of your comments as well. As I say, we'll be back next week. Um, bet responsibly, Steve. Absolutely but, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but bet with passion. That doesn't work, does it? Because it, it, it says bet no, responsibly, you but bet with passion. Um, that's a badge that uh, John Owen from Formby gave me many moon ago. Absolutely brilliant. Um, thanks for watching once again uh, to all of our lovely Sweet Spot viewers. We'll be back next week. St uh, take care. Stay safe. See you later, everyone. Bye-bye.